All good things must eventually come to an end. It's been an honor to share my adventure through Japan with you all, and in today's video, we'll explore the grand finale of this series as I take you to Tokyo, the bustling heart of this beautiful country. For those of you who are just joining in on this series, I embarked on a two-week journey to Japan, a captivating experience just brimming with culinary exploration, thrilling adventures, and of course, hunting for retro video games. I already uploaded two videos covering my visit to the cities of Osaka and Kyoto with all my retro game hunting escapades within those cities. So if you want to catch up on the series, all of those two videos link down below in the video description. So Tokyo is where I spent most of my time in Japan, and it also happens to be where I got most of my pickups. I've collected a bunch of fantastic items that I can't wait to share with you in an upcoming video, which I will be releasing very soon. Definitely make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that. Oh, and while you're at it, do me a solid and hit that like button if you're enjoying this series. Anyway, on with the video. So on our first full day in Tokyo, I had the privilege of meeting up with a local who has a ton of experience in finding some great deals on retro video games. He actually has a YouTube channel of his own where he does a lot of his own game hunting called Scruffy Looking RGB. That's right. Scruffy was kind enough to meet me in Tokyo, Akihabara to be exact. See, that's Super Potato right there. And there's nobody here because it's super early in the morning. The early bird gets the worm. Now we actually won't be staying in Akihabara, but rather Scruffy will be driving us to a city called Chiba, just on the outskirts of Tokyo. The idea is that traveling further out of the city, where presumably there are less tourists, we should be able to find more stuff at better prices. Well, that's the idea at least, so hopefully it pans out. So our first stop is at a recycling center. This one here is very much like a hard off retail store with a similar layout. Now, of course, I immediately gravitated to the glass cabinets because that's really where all the cool and rare stuff is. There were quite a few Nintendo handhelds, but I really didn't see too many deals here. This anniversary edition Game Boy Micro is about 33,000 yen, or $235, which for a complete in box set isn't too bad. There was a box Famicom for 5,000 yen, which I know is pretty common here, but still seems like a pretty good deal at 35 bucks. Here was a copy of Metroid 2 Loose for the Game Boy at about 1,800 yen. I really do wish I picked up more Game Boy games during my trip. Now here we have some complete in box Pokemon games for the original Game Boy. Red, blue, and yellow. According to Scruffy, these have really shot up in value recently, but he said these here were priced better than most shops in Tokyo. Scruffy also explained how many of these games shown here only recently shot up in value, even though they're actually quite common on other platforms. I suppose for some reason, the PC Engine variants are a bit more desirable. So all in all, this particular store actually had a pretty nice selection of stuff. It's unfortunate that I visited so early in my trip since I really hadn't quite grasped the value of things uh, to put prices into perspective, so I really do think I passed up some pretty good deals here. Anyway, we hop back in the car to our next stop, which was of course a hard off. Now, the nice thing about this particular location is that they had a huge junk section. The shelves were stocked. It's really just amazing how much they have, and not just video games, pretty much any electronic device you can think of. Now, one of the things I noticed was that there were a lot of PS Vitas and PSPs, which were in my view pretty fairly priced, which was kind of a surprise. I guess I'm not too familiar with the state of Sony handhelds, but some here were less than 9,000 yen or around 60 bucks, which to me seems like a pretty good deal. The selection, variety, and quantity here actually was really quite good. In retrospect, it seems like they definitely had a lot more stuff than some of the stores in Tokyo. And these Game Boy prices aren't too bad at all. I mean, 4,400 yen for a GBA is a steal nowadays. That's right around 30 bucks. And these SPs are about 65 bucks. This boxed PC Engine Core graphics was definitely tempting being complete in box as well as these Sega Saturns. They even had some really nice boxed accessories. It's really amazing just how well the Japanese take care of their things. I mean, these almost look like new. Now, I really have to say that this particular hard off had an incredible selection of games. I mean, it was pretty massive and there was just too many to show in a single video. 
Now, I stumbled across this complete in box Smash Bros for the N64, and I absolutely love the box art. At a mere 1800 yen, this seems like a steal. What do you all think? Who has the better artwork? Japan or North America? I personally think the Japanese get better artwork than we do, but definitely let me know what you think down below in the comments. Now, here was something really interesting. They had a whole cabinet full of Game Boys with burned in screens for very decent prices. These would be perfect candidates for screen modding. And here were a couple of Wonder Swans, which if you don't know, were a Japanese exclusive console designed by Gunpai Yokoi, the same guy who designed the original Game Boy. These are definitely really cool and the prices aren't too bad either. Anyway, this particular hard off was truly stocked with tons of fantastic stuff but I wanted to hit a bunch of different stores, so it's off to the next one. But before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Sendico. Sendico is an online service that helps you shop on Japanese websites and bid on Japanese auctions. They hold and consolidate all your orders in their warehouse until you want them shipped right to your door. They'll package all your items with care and ship all your orders in a single box directly to you. I use Sendico all the time and have always had a fantastic experience and found some killer deals on retro video game consoles. The folks at Sendico have made this entire trip to Japan possible, so again, a huge thank you to Sendico for sponsoring this trip. Check out the link in the description to get started with Sendico so you can find your very own retro gaming deals. All right, so this Heart of location is gonna be the last one for the day, but thankfully it had some real gems like this Panasonic Q, which is really rare. I think I saw only one other one during the trip besides this one. Scruffy found this pretty cool Sony MSX computer, which also had an amazing price. And there was a fantastic complete in box 1000 series PSP. And here we had a PC engine, again, for not bad of a price. So Scruffy actually released a couple videos of our retro hunting journey on his channel, so definitely check that out to get his take on our finds. I'll leave a link to it down below in the description. And so ends our first retro hunting day on the outskirts of Tokyo in Chiba. Now, one of the places that Scruffy told us we absolutely had to visit was the Tokyo City Flea Market. This is actually held at a racetrack called the Tokyo City Kaiba, located in Shinagawa. So we hopped on the train to check it out. Now, unfortunately, when we arrived, it appeared as though it was canceled. It was a cloudy day with a chance of rain, so that may have been the reason. Needless to say, we were a bit bummed out since I do hear the flea market is a great place to snag some deals. I was really looking forward to checking this place out, but on the bright side, I had another opportunity to travel outside of Tokyo, but this time to a place called Chiba. And this is all thanks to another friend, who again, I'm sure some of you are familiar with, Stoned Edge. Stoned Edge, or Ben, is a talented modder who has made some pretty cool builds, such as this amazingly built Wii Portable. Anyway, while we were disappointed that we couldn't go to the flea market, we hopped on a train to the Yokohama station to meet up with Ben. Now, Chiba is due east of Tokyo, and quite a long car ride. So of course, our first stop is yet another hard off. I mean, is anyone even surprised at this point? Now, this place had some really awesome stuff. I'm always just completely blown away with the sheer amount of variety and quality of everything that's in these stores. One of the things that really stuck out to me here was this completely obscure Sega contraption called the Homestar Extra. After looking it up, it appears to be some sort of device that turns one of your rooms essentially into a planetarium. This thing is pretty pricey, but totally unique. I had no idea Sega made toys like this. I also saw this copy of Resident Evil 2 for the N64, and while I do have the North American copy, I would have loved to have a complete in box Japanese version. But at 13,000 yen, I think I'm gonna hold off. Ben was awesome, and thankfully he was helping me sift through all the stuff here. It's just a lot to take in, and you can easily skip over great finds, so having an extra set of eyes really helps out. And because going to these stores can be completely overwhelming, one of the lessons I've taken away from this trip is that you really need to sort of plan ahead and think about exactly what you really wanna purchase and bring back home. It can be very easy to get carried away and become overwhelmed with the sheer amount of stuff. I wanna buy just everything in sight, but I did set a budget and I had to prioritize based off of it. Having a fixed budget, it was just so hard to not pull the trigger on things because you really never knew what you would find next. Really, I think having goals and things in mind ahead of time can really help with this. 
Anyway, we're off to the next door and any guesses? Yep, that's right, we're going to another hard off. Now guys, at this next place, I think I really hit the jackpot. It was one of those things I was really looking for while in Japan, and this was the only place that I came across some, and it's Movies on Laserdisc. If you're a longtime follower of the channel, you know that I just adore this format, and I even have quite a few live streams of me refurbishing a broken Laserdisc player. Well, actually, it's a laser active system, which is not only a Laserdisc player, but also an incredible game console. Now, this hard off actually had quite a few crates chock full of Laserdisc movies for dirt cheap. Some of them as low as 200 yen, which is basically like $1.50, and some were as high as 500 yen. I mean, they were practically giving these away, and they even had some really great titles. And like I said before, I will be making a completely separate video showcasing all the stuff I got, so definitely be on the lookout for that video to see what Laserdisc movies I ended up getting. I mean, this was just another great store that was really well stocked, but now it's time to head to the next hard off before grabbing dinner. And again, this place did not disappoint. Just a massive selection of handhelds and consoles at fairly reasonable prices. Like this rare baby blue Sega Game Gear, a bunch of AV Famicoms, and this PS1. Just the sheer amount of stuff that they have here is astonishing. So after hopping from shop to shop for a long time, we worked up quite the appetite. So we ventured out for a place to eat. And it actually just so happens that the town we were in was having a festival and the streets were simply packed. We checked out the festivities for a bit, grabbed something to eat, and figured we'd check out one last hard off before heading back to the hotel. Now we actually weren't there too long because I found a pretty amazing deal almost immediately, which got me super excited. So after spending quite a bit of money, we left before I had the chance to spend any more. But before we left, Ben actually handed me a really cool project that he's been working on that I will be showcasing on the channel very soon. So definitely be on the lookout for that. So this is actually the part of the trip where I visit both the cities of Osaka and Kyoto. I already published these videos, so definitely check them out if you haven't seen them. We visited a bunch of really awesome places like Super Nintendo World, the Fushimi Inari Shrine, and of course we did a ton of retro game hunting. But anyway, after Osaka and Kyoto, we made our way back to Tokyo for the last few days of the trip. Now of course, when you visit Tokyo, you have to visit Akihabara, Japan's electric district. I always love coming here, it's basically a place completely dedicated to electronics, both old and new. It's simply amazing. I stopped by a bunch of stores here, like Mobile World, which primarily focuses on the newer stuff, but they do have some retro items as well. A place called Traders, which also does tend to focus more on the modern stuff. And of course, Super Potato. As usual, the selection here is top notch, but the prices in general are quite a bit higher than of course some of the places I looked at in Chiba and Saitama. I mean, look at these pair of Game Boy Advance consoles. They're both over 23,000 yen each. Yikes. And the prices didn't stop there. A lot of the popular handhelds were just through the roof. And as per usual, they do have an interesting collection of items that aren't even for sale. Now, there are some pretty okay deals that can still be found, especially if you search for the junk bins, which typically yields results like this Panasonic 3DO for about 5,400 yen, which isn't too bad depending on what issues it has. And of course, when in Super Potato, you have to go to the top floor and hit up their mini arcade and also grab some snacks. I feel like these are the snacks that you'd find in Japanese arcades back in the 80s and 90s. A very cool place to just sit back, chill, and relax for a bit. We also stopped by another trader store, which had these mystery bags of what appears to be a bunch of PlayStation games for just 5,000 yen. I definitely thought about picking one of these up to open in a video, but my retro hunting funds were dwindling by this point. So next we made a quick stop to Retro Game Camp. Now this place had a pretty good selection of stuff, but was also a bit more on the pricier side.
And as is typical in a lot of these shops, there is an upstairs to explore. Now, the last place I wanted to stop by in Akihabara was Beep, but unfortunately they were closed because their air conditioning was broken. But worry not, we'll definitely try to come back here in a couple days. Now, for the next few days, I actually had the chance to head over to Game Preservation Society, located in Setagaya City within Tokyo. I had a chance to meet the curator, Joseph Radon, and his incredible team and see the fantastic archiving of incredibly rare games and game-related media. Now, I basically spent three days here, and I will be doing a mini documentary on this incredible organization, which is preserving video game history right here in Japan. I'm really excited to share their story and their incredible work. Definitely be on the lookout for that video, as I'm hoping to have it completed sometime in the November timeframe. Now, later after visiting the Game Preservation Society, I was lucky enough to meet up with some of my family that are currently living in Japan. My cousin Chrissy, Kathy, and her awesome husband Martin all live in Japan, so I'm glad I had the opportunity to see them while I was over there. We got some delicious crepes and got to walk around the Ueno Park area and catch up. It was fantastic. Now, even though I was spending a lot of time over at the Game Preservation Society for a couple days of the trip, I did manage to find some time to head over to another pretty good place for retro game hunting called Nakano Broadway. This place is essentially a market for all things collectible. They have a ton of stores for anime, manga, toys, models, and of course, retro video games. Some of these stores are just filled wall to wall with stuff. It's really something to see. They have a number of stores selling video games like Mandrake Galaxy and Lash and Bang. Nakano Broadway is definitely worth a visit if you're ever in the area. Now on our way to dinner, I actually passed by some Gashapon capsule machines, and these are things that I typically ignore, but this particular machine caught my eye. Now as you can see, this is a very high-end retro gaming console. I'll definitely be showing this off in my pickups video. Anyway, we eventually stopped to eat at a really cool place in Ginza called the Ginza Lion Beer Hall which just so happens to be the oldest beer hall in Japan. It's definitely a really unique building, and I really dig how they preserved the inside and kept it like it was back in the day. Even that mural in the back is all original. Pretty neat. Now, this is my last day in Japan, and there are two things I wanted to do. First, I had to go back to Beep to see if they were open, because remember, their AC was broken. And second, there's actually another really cool store that I really wanted to check out in Akihabara, and it's actually kind of hidden, so let's go ahead and head over there. So here it is. This is Cotton Ken, or Kenchan. This place actually has a website, and I believe it was, for a while, the only place you could get an RGB driver kit for the Game Gear. But this is definitely a bit of an unusual spot because they sell a lot of pre-modded consoles. I mean, they have a lot of really cool stuff here. Various mod kits, regular consoles, just a bunch of really cool stuff that folks like you and me geek out on. It's a small operation tucked away in Akihabara, but I most definitely recommend that you check it out if you ever find yourself in Tokyo. Now, I have to say that places like Cotton Ken is why Akihabara is such an amazing place. There is really, truly something here for everybody. From arcades, toys, anime, and of course, tons and tons of video games. Just walking around here brings a smile to my face. There's no other place like it on Earth. All right, now let's head to Beep. Fingers crossed that they're open. Awesome, I feel like we got really lucky here because they were open, but I ran into a problem. Oh, no video? Okay. Yep, I wasn't allowed to film in the store. In Japan, there are some shops that really don't allow you to film, but I did manage to get some footage while I was in there before I was told to stop. And it's really a shame because Beep is a really cool store and they have so much cool stuff. It definitely seems like they specialize in Japanese computers like the PC88 and 98, which both have a dedicated following. Now, the really cool thing about my particular visit to Beep is that I probably got my biggest and best pickup here. It's definitely the biggest item I bought, and I literally had to buy an extra suitcase to bring it back home. I'll definitely be showcasing this in my pickups video, so definitely make sure you're on the lookout for when I release that video. 
In the meantime, however, drop a guess in the comments as to what you think this is. Now, as the trip draws to a close, the last place I visited was a really cool spot in Shinjuku that I definitely recommend. It's called The Golden Guy. This is a small district filled with tons of small restaurants and bars in these tight alleyways. And when I say small, I mean each place fits anywhere between 5 and 10 people. It's again a really unique experience, and I definitely recommend coming out here just to grab a quick bite or something to drink. Well guys, that wraps up my stay in Tokyo and Japan as a whole. It's been an absolute privilege to visit the country, and I'm so glad that I was able to share it with you all. I have to again give a huge thank you to Sendico for sponsoring this trip, and as always, I'll see you all very soon.